I'm going to start with this beautiful young lady right here. <laughs> and this is going to be tough, folks, I'll tell you. This is my daughter-in-law, Dia Reed Oxford. This is my son, Charles. And my wife, Frances. We love y'all. <laughs> Thank you all. Y'all go ahead and sit down, I guess, huh? I'd like to uh, invite the National Vice Commanders, please come forward. These, uh, these guys have represented me and us extremely well during the past 24 months. I appreciate your devotion, the sacrifice for our organization. And as a, uh, as a token of my appreciation, I would like to pre present a small gift. Turn the mic over to Rich Hager. Commander, on behalf of your leadership that you've shown us all year, the both years, um, you've been an inspiration to all five of us. And on, our, on behalf of all five of us, we'd like to present you with a gift. Thank you. Yeah. You can open it if you want. It's hard to get. Goblets are trying to tell me something here. <laughs> the stopper for this is in the other mm -hmm. bottle. Beautiful. This, this is a hand engraved uh, decanter with uh, six glasses that uh, are engraved with each of our names on it, including yours. <laughs> and uh, also so that you can keep that decanter refilled, we have another gift for you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Love you guys. I'd like to now call on the National Historian, Sergeant Arms Chaplain, and my aide to come forward. Uh, you each played a successful, important role in our organization. I salute you for your service, and I just ask you please accept these gifts as a token.
like to yeah. turn the mic over to Age Larry Klein. And so just like uh, when we're doing photos, you need to look that way. <laughs> when uh, we were trying to come up with uh, some good ideas for presents at the uh, commander's homecoming, he gave out uh, American Legion World Series baseballs. So we figured, what the heck, we'll give some back to him. The, uh, well, he'll have it in a second. And uh, we're, we got three of them, and we try to get signatures from every department and present them to the commander here. That's our first. And it took us a long time between the four of us to get those different signatures written on there. So. The, the second one was, uh, there was always a uh, rumor going around that the commander had been in marine aviation when he was younger. So through uh, a lot of research and such, well actually Francis gave me a few pictures that proved it. We uh, got him a wooden model of the aircraft in his original squadron markings, accurate. That's the one you're standing in front of, too. I told you this is going to be hard. But uh, I'd like to have a few words from National Edge to Dan Wheeler. Mr. Commander, it has been a rare honor and privilege to serve you and America's veterans under your leadership. We are all grateful to you for your friendship and your mentorship. And uh, if we had to have any commander serve more than one term, we unanimously vote for you. And if you want to stay on, we'll tell Paul Dillard another time. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Look, your uh, uh, slogan was a foundation for the future. And you know a bit about foundations, and you've made it your theme, and you know something about building foundations. I'm not much of a handyman myself. Only toolbox I have is right here. So, and there's not, not many tools in it. But, uh, today, uh, your executive directors, the national treasurer, myself, and your division directors purchased a Lowe's gift card for you for $1,500 to help you build your foundations and your other handiwork. And we hope that as you're doing this, you'll remember your loyal friends back at national headquarters. We love you and we thank you so much for your leadership and don't make yourself a stranger. They don't know what kind of projects I've got coming up, but that will be uh, well used. I'd like to invite uh, David L. King, National Vice Commander, to take over to Gallo and preside over the next order of business. After serving the last two years as National Vice Commander, I am honored to represent all members of the American Legion in presiding over the next order of business. At this time, we will present to our National Commander, James W. Bill Oxford, the colors of his year in office and plaque. At this time, I call on past National Commander Daniel A. Ludwig to present the colors.
Thank you, Vice Commander King. Legionnaires, distinguished guests, please rise for the presentation of colors to our national commander. I now call on color guard from Harrisburg Post 472, Houston, Texas, to present National Commander Oxford's colors to center stage. And salute. Two. Please be seated. National Commander Oxford, I invite you to join me here at the lectern. Commander Oxford, you have now cemented your legacy as the longest serving national commander in the history of our great organization. You enlisted for an ad You enlisted for an additional year, not because of personal ambition or a drive for power. You did it out of a devotion and an obligation to serve the American Legion through challenges not seen since World War II or the Great Depression. You, you remained optimistic and steadfast. Society may have shut down during the pandemic, but the American Legion continued to serve in communities around the world under your leadership. From blood drives to online job fairs, you kept this engine running. We have built an incredible relationship with the Ganassi Racing and adopted a model, Veterans Strengthening America, all during your term of office. Perhaps most importantly, you have raised public awareness about the American Legion's commitment to end veteran suicide. National Commander Oxford, you are about to earn a new title, that of past National Commander. This coveted title says that you did your duty and left your imprint on our enduring legacy. You have also earned a well-deserved rest and the eternal gratitude of our American Legion family. And so, Commander, I am pleased and honored to present these colors, your colors, to you. I present them on behalf of all Legionnaires who respect you for your courage and commitment to the American Legion, for your service and sacrifice to all veterans, and for your love and loyalty to God and country. May God bless you and your family always. Commander Bill Oxford, your colors. Color Guard, please retire my colors. Retire colors. Two. Thank you, uh, Dan. When uh, this thing started two years ago, I didn't have a clue. But uh, I am just so thankful for the opportunity, and I, I just I want to take just a couple of moments to uh, to express thanks uh, to some different folks. And first of all, I'd like to thank my family for being here. They have been so supportive. But I'd like to <laughs> absolutely uh, uh, I'd like to thank for Commander Ludwig for uh, doing the ceremony. I'd like to thank uh, Dan Wheeler for his help, support, advice, direction, uh, and his staff. I mean, the, the folks in the Indianapolis, the folks dealing with sales, the folks in, in D.C. all do great work. We need to recognize their, uh, their commitment. But, Dan, thanks very much for your help and support. 
and, and a special thanks to our national vice commanders, Dave, Frank, Rick, Bruce, and Rob. They have represented us across this country well. Gentlemen, thank you. But to the people, most important, to our department, our division, our district, our post commanders and county commanders, uh, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where the boots are on the ground. Thank you for your help, support, advice, direction, and the welcome we received in your different departments. And, and to the adjutants of those same uh, organizations, department, division, county, uh, district, post adjutants, they're the first sergeants of our organization. Thank you all for your help, support, advice, direction, and uh, promoting our American Legion ideals. To the, absolutely. But the most important people in our organization, that's the Blue Cap Legionnaires. Without you, we could not do the job that we do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd like to group every one of those people together. That's most of all the friends that we've met and got to know across the country, across the world. But those friendships that we made and are developing and will continue to have are most important to us. But I'm gonna, gonna finish this section with a, with a special thanks uh, to my A, Larry Klein. Many hours, we didn't always agree, but hours and hours of do this, don't do that. Uh, where did he go? But the, those kinds of things uh, are an extremely valuable uh, or an extremely valuable contribution to the commander's job. But Larry, thanks very much for what you do or have done. I'd like to now call on National Vice Commander Bruce Furbach uh, to assume the podium. I now call on past National Commander John P. Jake Comer to present the plaque to our outgoing National Commander. Thank you very much. What an honor has been given to me in the presenting of this plaque. Each year, those are special appointments. Commander, will you please join me? Who are you? There you go. We can never truly predict what will happen during our time as national commander. Lynn Stambaugh was the Pearl Harbor commander. Rick Santos of Delaware was our 9-11 commander. And now American Legion history lists you as our COVID-19 commander. When you were elected in 2019, nobody had ever heard of the coronavirus. A year later, we all knew what it was and the enormous threat it presented, represented to all. Your steady and responsible leadership throughout the crisis was essential. You frequently reminded us that America has made it through many challenges and that we always overcame them. Zoom, social distancing, PPE, who even knew what these things were two years ago? But you understood the need to embrace these changes and prioritize the safety of our members and our youth program participants. Even during long stretches when department visits were canceled and you worked from home, you kept advocating for veterans, families, and our allies in Afghanistan. No other national commander was given a second year, but you used that extra time wisely. I am happy to present to you a plaque which attests to your election to the high office of National Commander of the American Legion. It is given in appreciation of your dedicated leadership and in recognition of your devoted service to God and country. 
and in token of the high esteem of your fellow legionnaires. It is presented this second day of September before the delegates assembled at the National Convention in Phoenix, Arizona. Congratulations, Commander Oxford. During my previous remarks, I neglected uh, to mention the Department of North Carolina. Thank you all. When uh, I, I've, I've had many thoughts about how this would be and what it would be like, and I've changed my comments several, several times since I started, but I think that I just, I just want to talk about just a couple things. Or I could, could talk about all of the fabulous places that we've seen, the, the wonders of the country, the wonders of the world. And I mean, there are multiple, White House uh, and many others, all, all across the world. Or maybe, maybe I could talk about uh, all of the, the fabulous and famous people that we've met. I mean, presidents, multiple presidents, congressmen, uh, Chip Canassi, Jimmy Johnson, and the list goes on and on, congressmen, senators. But I decided not to do that. I wanted to put some emphasis on one of the most memorable things that sticks in my mind. It is the most selfless act that I have seen. We were, we were in Puerto Rico last year during the earthquakes, we got to post 87 in Guanaca, Puerto Rico. The post commander, Clemente Delgado, was at the post collecting relief supplies, food, clothing, medical supplies for the people that had been affected by the earthquakes. This post, we got to the post in Puerto Rico, some of the streets are narrow, so we parked half on the street, half on the sidewalk. We got ready to get out. The van goes, blah, blah, blah. the driver said, oh, that's the wind. It was another earthquake. But we, we got into the post. The post commander was there. He gave us the tour, explained what he was doing, the, the needs, and, and we, we probably spent a couple hours. But that post commander was looking to support his fellow countrymen from his post. His post was pretty much destroyed. There were cracks uh, this big in his building, and I have not heard how that has turned out. But the building was, was pretty much uh, demolished. But we spent several hours. After we got through, Clemente said, follow me over to my house. And, you know, we didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe we'd have a have a glass of tea or a sandwich, but we got to his house. His house was relatively new, uh, within three to five years old, but his house was on its side. This post commander was more worried about his countrymen, his fellow citizens, than he was his own well-being. The most selfless act I've ever seen. But and I'm sure your new commander will tell you about his theme and his plans and uh, where he wants to take the organization. But please don't forget about my theme, the foundation for the future. The American Legion is 102 years old, and we've got to remember just as valuable, just as important, just as relevant as we've ever been. But we 
you, me, we, us. We are the future of our organization. The decisions that we make today, the ones we made yesterday and the ones we will make tomorrow we are affecting our organization and will for decades to come. Please remember that. Take, make that consideration in every decision that you make. Two parts. We got to make sure membership gets back to a level that we can accept. We've had some hard membership years. COVID has dealt us some hands that really we didn't want to hold, but we didn't have a choice. We've got to continue to move forward, make sure everybody gets to be a recruiter, a retainer, an invitor. We've got to have the whole Legion family as part of our membership team. We, I can't do it. Commander Paul can't do it, but we can do it. We've got to make sure we remember the future of our organization when we think about membership. But when we think about the future, thank you. When, when we think about the future, we've got to make sure we understand we also can impact the future of our country with our children and youth programs. We are teaching, coaching, developing, mentoring the future leaders of this country with our children and youth programs. Uh, the numbers are astonishing. The graduates that we have from our programs is astonishing. They are involved with every level of government. We've got to make sure we continue to support, endorse, promote, and make sure those children and youth programs are continue to be supported. Please remember the future of our organization when you think about these past two years. The foundation for the future starts here. We are it. Thank you all.